Hey, good Monday afternoon, everyone. Pastor Matt with you. And uh, so good to be with you this afternoon. I'm going to be gone for the next couple of days, so I decided I'd get my devotional out today, and then I'll be back for Thursday to do Thursday's devotional. But uh, So um, a friend of mine used to tell me that whenever you couldn't think about what to talk about or what to preach about or offer a devotional about, um, you could always go to the story of Naaman. Naaman is a story found in 2 Kings chapter 5. It's one, one of the great stories of the Old Testament. There are a couple of old, story, old Testament stories found in Kings that I love, um, and Naaman is one of them. Um, but if you think about that story, you realize there's a lot of strange incidents uh, that take place in that story. Um, in fact, it's so strange that you might think that maybe it's not true. It's kind of fake. But Jesus talks about in um, Luke chapter 4, um, that uh, there were many in Israel uh, with leprosy at the time of Elisha the prophet, but only Naaman the Syrian was cleansed. So Jesus kind of gives some some uh, validity to that. So um, uh, just uh, if you have your Bibles, you can look at uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, and, and I'll just kind of walk you through the story and then tell you a couple things. The, the first strange incident is that Naaman, who was the <laughs> leader of the armies who were sworn enemies of, of uh, the Israelites, God gave Naaman success. He was a great man, the, the scripture says. Um, and so you have to wonder, why did God bless him? Why did God bless the um, um, Arameans, who was the army that he led? Um, and the reason is that, very simple, the Israelites were living in a time of apostasy. They were not acting as God's people. They were, they were guilty of syncretism. That is, they were mis work, uh, mixing in the worship of false gods with the worship of the one true God. Um, and I think we have to recognize and realize that uh, when we aren't doing things the way that God expects us to do them, um, there's a possibility that uh, his judgment could be poured out upon us. And I think that's what the Old Testament several times shows us in some of those stories. The second thing has to do with in this story is this little girl, who I think is really the hero of the story. She um, tells her, her uh, uh, she discovers that her, her, uh, her master, Naaman, is um, uh, afflicted with this leprosy. <clears throat> And she tells uh, his wife, her master's wife, that there's a great prophet in Israel who could heal them. And so um, Naaman goes to ask his king for permission to go to Naaman, to uh, Elisha to be healed. And the um, king says, absolutely, let's go do it. I'll send a letter to the king and, and uh, give you some money and you can try to make sure that all that can be done. Now, this is amazing. This is a little servant girl um, and she's telling her boss where to get healing and um, they're listening to her. <laughs> Not only did Naaman listen to her, but the king listened to that report. Um, you know, you would say that would be an impossible situation, except God's in control and God's in charge. And uh, what we need to recognize and realize is that no one is too insignificant for God to use. No one is so small or um, 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 incapable of fulfilling God's plan if we're just surrendered to his will. Um, the third strange incident, of course, is the whole healing and, and Naaman's response. Naaman goes and uh, takes all of his chariots, all of his horses, all this stuff that he's got, and he knocks on Elisha's door, and Elisha's servant comes out and says, Sorry, buddy, <laughs> prophet's busy. He can't see you today. Um, but he did say to go down into the Jordan River, the dirty little river over here, and uh, dip in it seven times, and, and that'll take care of everything. And Naaman is, is like, are you out of your mind? That's a dirty, lousy, stinking, rotten river. We've got two great rivers in Aram, the, the Abana and the Parafar, and, and they're much beautiful and clean, and it would be great. And he's about ready to give up on the whole thing when one of his servants says, look, if the prophet had asked you to perform some mighty spectacular sacrifice, you would have done that, right? And Amos thinks, yeah, you're right, I would have. So surprisingly, Naaman listens to one of his servants, and he goes down to the, the Jordan, puts his foot in the water. Uh, I love the song about uh, uh, Naaman goes down to the river. Um, and, and, but he puts his foot in the water, he goes down, and, and you gotta figure, he goes down six times under the water and comes up and there's no change. And you gotta figure around the fourth or the fifth time, he's getting a little bit you know, distressed about all this, but the seventh time he goes down and comes up, bingo, he's healed. And all of a sudden, he is now a changed man because he has experienced the miracle of God in his life. And he's so grateful. He, 
he offers the prophet um, a, a, a big reward. Um, Naaman says, uh, I don't want it, but I'll take two mule loads of earth so that I can offer a sacrifice to God. Um, that's pretty amazing in and of itself. And then there's one more part of this story that's kind of interesting. Naaman says to, uh, to, uh, to, to Elisha, he says, when my master enters the temple of Ramon, which was the false god of Aram, and goes to bow down and leaning on my arm, I will have to bow down as well. So may the Lord your God forgive me, forgive your servant for this. And Elisha says, go in peace. Now, you might find this interesting because this was something that was done on what we would call occasions of state. Um, what he's telling Elisha is, I'm not worshiping that God. I'm not worshiping that false God because I know now he's a false God. I know what the true God uh, is, the, the God of Israel is a true God. But I don't want to lose my job and I don't want to. I don't want to disrespect my my boss and my king. Now, I'm not here to tell you um, how you have to live your life with these sort of things, uh, but I will tell you this: I believe that um, uh, most of us are very capable of of immediately insisting for new believers that they just disregard and throw out everything that they that they currently have in their life that uh, we would say is well not not acceptable to God. Um, and and, and I, I want to be very clear about this. That's God's job to do, not ours. You know, let the Holy Spirit convict someone about their habits or about their language or about their uh, places of, of being. That's not our job. Um, and uh, once that's done, uh, we can just rely on God to continue to help them grow. Um, that's what our, our manual talks about, the doctrine of entire sanctification, that there's a marked difference between um, an, an immediate changed character and a, and a mature character. It takes time for some of those things to happen. We believe in growing in grace. And so, um, uh, uh, you know, let's not, uh, let's not be too quick to, to condemn anyone. But the big hero of the story is the little girl. Her life must have been a testimony to her faith in God so that when um, um, Naaman heard what she had to say, he believed her. And, of course, the king believed Naaman. Had a great opportunity today to visit with Bob. And um, one of the things that um, he shared with me was that he had made a resolution in that hospital to have a Christian witness and, and to be a sweet, tempered, wonderful patient to all of those those folks and boy i can tell you he's been through a lot of pain a lot of difficulty um he is doing better but he's still got a long way to go but i i commended him i said that's the great christian testimony you can have in this place so um let me just uh, uh, you know encourage you today to uh, have that kind of testimony that others can see and can recognize and can uh, uh, buy into as it were so that uh, they will know the God that you love and you serve, and they can love him and serve him as well. Um, Y'all have a great time. I'll see you Wednesday night on Zoom for a prayer gathering, and then I'll be back on Thursday with another devotional.